Welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at dot XMP. So what in the world is a dot XMP file? Now this is the most common question I get on the comments section of all my YouTubes. People are totally confused as to what this dot XMP file is. They don't want the dot XMP file. And the second part of this is how do you save a raw file after you've made adjustments? and either Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. Now, before we get into that, you need to remember that Lightroom Develop Module and Adobe Camera Raw are the exact same program. If I tell you it does something for one, it's also doing something for the other. Now the .xmp file is not created right away. Now if you were to just take your images and drag them off your memory or SD card, you'll notice that there aren't any .xmp files because there hasn't been anything associated with it. The XMP is basically just a text file and I'm gonna open one up here so you can see what it's doing. Now in my process, I am going into Photo Mechanic and I am importing data. So let's go ahead and go over to Photo Mechanic. And so here are my images. And I've already done this, but we'll go ahead and hit Command G. So you can see right here, I'm importing information into it. Now, I usually have more information than this, but you can just see I have some description, my name, and I have a lot, all my contact information below it. All that gets associated with all my images. When you import all that information into your photos, it needs to get stored somewhere. Now, because you cannot overwrite or change a raw file, CR2 for Canon, NEF, or Sony, those files cannot be overwritten. So what it does is it stores all changes of the original raw file in this .xmp. Now there is a workaround for this. For those of you who can't stand having this corresponding file, you can convert your images to a DNG, which is Adobe's digital negative. So if I'm gonna go in here to Lightroom, I've got this up, and we're just gonna go ahead and click import. And you'll notice I have a little option right here called copy as DNG. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna convert that CR2 file into a DNG file, which is a digital negative. One of the downfalls is, of DNG is it does compress the file a little bit, and it puts that XMP file inside of the file, so you don't have a separate file. So if it's driving you nuts, maybe an option for you is to convert all your images to a DNG, and that XMP data will be stored inside the DNG file. We're gonna go ahead and cancel out of that because we're not gonna use it. Now I'm not sure why these are showing up as on one photo XMPs right now, but they should just be a regular XMP. Now what we'll do is we are going to take, this is the file I've been working with. I'm gonna take this file and I'm gonna drop this into Photoshop and what we're gonna bring it up. And so you're gonna see, I've made all these horrible adjustments on purpose. All I'm trying to do is make adjustments so you can see them. So I went through here and made some adjustments and I went into a couple of the other sections like curves and detail and made some adjustments there. So you can see detail. I've made some sharpening adjustments just so I have some adjustments to be made. Now, when you make an adjustment on a raw file, it automatically saves that adjustment in the .xmp file. Well, why? Because you can never save a raw file. So it has to store what you did somewhere. That somewhere is the .xmp file. And it does this automatically. So if I come in here to basic and I make this little adjustment, the program is automatically saving that instantaneously in the background. You don't see it happen in that .xmp file. You don't need to save anything. If you just simply hit done, and then you come back up here and you open that file up again, it's gonna be at the exact same point. 
So if I come here and I make this darker so we can see it get really dark and I hit done, then I take that file and I drop it back in. Remember, we've closed it. We open it back up. It saved that adjustment. Well, I didn't save anything. When you make the adjustment, it automatically saves it in the .xmp file. That is how a raw file works. So let's go ahead over, we're gonna go ahead and hit cancel, and we are going to take a look at the .xmp file for this photo. If I come in here and I open this, and this is, you can see right here, here's .xmp, and this is what it looks like inside. It's simply just a text file with a whole bunch of commands. And so we've got all this basic information, but now you can start to see it. Yes, I live in Pennsylvania. I put USA in. I am the photographer. There's my name. So I called this ISO ranges in the beginning. So all this information is here. Here's my camera. It was a 100 millimeter 2.8 macro shot on a Canon camera. So Canon CR2. Here's my camera, Canon EOS 5D Mark III saving all that information somewhere. And this somewhere is the .xmp file. And the computer does this automatically. So if we go down here and we start seeing my adjustments, right? White balance, I set it to daylight on purpose. So my color temperature is 5,500 because that's the daylight setting. Tint is at plus 10, saturation at zero, sharpness of 54. Color noise reduction, remember I adjusted that, it's at 25. So all those adjustments that you make are gonna be stored here in that .xmp file. If you take that .xmp file that we see right here, delete this, if I move this to the trash, it's not gonna delete your file or ruin anything. However, we'll go ahead and hit empty trash so that is gone. I guess I wanna empty it. And now when I open this file back up in Photoshop, all those adjustments or any of that information is gonna be gone. So you notice we are right back at the beginning like this is a unopened raw file. So all you're doing is deleting the information that you made to it. So yes, you can delete it, but any adjustments or all that information that I made when I imported, especially the caption information like my name, my country, who I am, where you can contact me, all that gets deleted because you deleted that file. You're not deleting the actual raw file, You're just gonna have to start over from the beginning. It's like hitting reset here. So if I was to come over here and make some adjustments and then I don't like what I'm doing, I can come over here and hit reset. So it's like hitting reset. Now when I hit reset, it automatically resets that XMP file. So now if I just come here and make a little adjustment and I hit done, you're gonna notice that that little XMP file, which is right here, has reappeared. Well, why did it reappear? Because now I created a new adjustment and it needs a place to store it. So it's automatically storing that information in the .xmp file. A lot of people get worried about these. They're not bad. They don't take up hardly any space. And if you ever do wanna delete it, you can delete it and then go ahead and start over. But that's what the .xmp file does in basically any photo program. That is what the .xmp file does for raw files in photo programs. And this is important for raw photos. If you were to open this photo in Photoshop and save it, there isn't going to be an associated .xmp file. You're still gonna have that metadata that gets saved as far as your caption information, and that gets saved inside of the JPEG, the TIFF, or whatever you save it as but any adjustments that you make to a raw file get saved in this .xmp file. So that's what they do inside of your program and that's why they appear next to your files once you start making adjustments. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and as always, don't forget to subscribe.